What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Sequence. We're doing a nighttime version for you. We're going to get a little bit nostalgic tonight. The date is August 7, 2010. We got a young coach, Trev, trying to figure out whatever he can do to stay in the big leagues. I think I was hitting a buck 20 at this point. And now we're in Cleveland. And there were some interesting things going on this night. Uh, we had these old retro jerseys on. And I'm talking old school stuff. Uh, high pants, but they're super baggy. Uh, collars with the button right here, the quarter button. And then the sleeves down, down to here. Big baggy uniforms. Kind of a ridiculous look. Uh, but what did I care? Because I was riding the pine. I was just there for, you know, I was just there. Okay, in 2010, we had an incredible team, and I wasn't playing much at all. But Alexi Casilla hurts himself in the first or second inning, and I get the call, hey, get your butt out there to second base. Now, at the time, I didn't play re really any second base, but I didn't care. I'm happy to be in the game. Finally get to get some at-bats, whatever, whatever. And little did I know, on this very night, with these silly uniforms, and even though I was batting a buck 20, I hit my first major league home run. And it's really exciting for me to be able to go back and watch this video. I actually haven't watched this in a long time, so it's cool to go through the at bat. So I'll do that here. It was off of Fausto Carmona. Later on, he's known as Roberto Hernandez. Dan should be showing you that homer right as we speak, the one off Roberto Hernandez. We'll get into the Fausto homer. I'll kind of bring you and bring you in and kind of tell you what I was thinking uh, during all of it. Uh, but it's definitely a special time for me and, and a fun thing to break down. So uh, let's get to the at bat. But you know, before we get there, let's see what kind of deal we got for you this week. Wait, 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 wait. Don't skip ahead because I really like this one. We got DraftKings sponsoring the video and they got promo code JOHNBOY going on. March Madness is here. Everybody loves March Madness and we all know every single year underdogs upset the big boys especially this year you've seen it all throughout the college basketball season so with the promo code john boy if you're a new user sign up use it if you bet four bucks on an underdog to beat a favorite you can cash out 256 dollars four dollars into 256 so if you're thinking about hey am i going to sign up for DraftKings? Now is the time to do it because this happens all the time in this tournament and you can turn four bucks into $256. It's that easy. Just download the top rated DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use the promo code JOMBO when you sign up. You'll turn the $4 into $256 if the underdog of your choosing pulls off the upset. That's code JOMBO to turn $4 into $256. For a limited time, only a DraftKings Sportsbook must be 21 or older, New Jersey, Indiana, or Pennsylvania only. New customers only, and restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or in Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. Here we are, top of the eighth inning. Turns out Kenny Lofton got inducted into the Cleveland Indians Hall of Fame that night. So shout out Kenny Lofton. One of the more underappreciated players of our time. Uh, also a really great dude. So love that this happened on his night. That means he was in attendance. It kind of makes me feel special. So like I said, we're in the eighth. This is my second at bat of the game. I think the first one I popped out to Shinsu Chu. Check out the lineups in some of these games. Dan, you better be putting those up right now. Uh, some different players, guys you might not even remember. Uh, the guy pitching for our team. Carl Pavano had a Chris Sale moment back in the day. I told you about these these uniforms you're about to see. He took the scissors to his uniform. He didn't take it to the whole team. It's just his. He said he couldn't throw. I think you're going to see why when I start this video. So here we go. Kenny waving to everybody. And I think they missed the pitch right here because when he comes back, it's already 1-0. So great job. 2010 was wild, bro. Got to say that. Anyways, here's Fausto's first pitch or second pitch, and I just take – one right down the middle. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm a young kid. I don't know what I'm doing. But look at these unis. Let's stop right here. Look at the sleeves. I mean, he's dealing with it too. There's at least they have regular sleeves. That's all I'm saying. Ours were uh, intrusive, if I could give an adjective to describe them. But here we go. 
one, one on there, hands up right there, kind of have them high. I don't really know why I have them up like that. I changed a lot throughout my career, but I feel like that was me being athletic, like wanting to feel athletic and feel uh, natural. And I just put them up there because I could, I don't know why, man. A lot of things were going on in 2010 that I'm not so sure why I was doing them. When you're a young player like that, you just, you do whatever it takes. So hands up, no big deal. Look at those sleeves. Now I get the 2-1. And Falso is basically a sinker guy at those little slider cutter. There's Lou Marson, my guy. So now I'm sitting in there, and I know 2-1, I'm going to get something out over the plate. So you can tell I just like get in the box really fast. This is, this is rookie Coach Trev. No swag, no nothing at all. Um, just trying to fit in, do whatever I can. So 2-1, I'm definitely looking out over the plate. And with his sinker, I'm trying to stay up the middle right here. I remember I remember this. I'm in the box right now with you guys. I'm trying to hit the ball right back up the middle because I don't want to roll one over because that's what you do on sinker ballers like Fausto right here. So I'm trying to stay up the middle here. And if I get a pitch out over the plate, I'm trying to drive it to right center. Maybe a little foreshadowing. And here's the pitch. Lou calls for one out over the plate, and I get it. And I pump it to right field. Chew, don't even chase. That thing's way gone, man. And I'm floating right now. I remember this feeling like I'm right there now. Floating around the bases. No home run trot. Here I'm like, dang, I just, I just did it. And then my boy Joe. Look at that smile right there. Look at this smile. I'm like serious, serious. Then I see Joe and all is good in the world. I just hit my first big league homer. High five from Joe Maurer, future Hall of Famer himself. And Falso can't believe it. He's like, did I just give a home run to that scrub? But here's the pitch. We're going to slow him up. We're, let's slow it down a little bit. Let's get right here. Here's the pitch. Oh, Oh, wrong button. Keep the leg down, not too much. And I just put it in the seats. It's a great swing. And you see here, this is kind of funny. This dude reaches out, and then he just catches it. And him and I are on the same vibe right here. We're doing it. I'm happy in there. Danny V, there's Jim Tomey. A lot of fun memories for me. And then, of course, there's Joe Maurer just saying, yeah, obviously I'm going to hit a double. If you hit a home run, Rook, I'm probably going to square the ball up as well. So. That's it, man. That's my first home run. I still get very excited talking about it. I end up hitting a few more, thank goodness. Um, but that's it, man. When you're a rook, you get your first one. You'll never forget. I was floating around those bases, very excited. Strange kind of night, but it didn't matter to me. I was on top of the world. That's it for today's episode. We'll be back on Thursday with another good one for you. Hope all is well. Peace.